Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Southern African platinum mining companies find themselves on the rack in the perfect storm of government's heavy-handed approach to safety, labor union struggles and increased taxes in Zimbabwe. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Welcome Martin. Thanks Shannon. Now Impala Platinum in Rustenburg has been hit by labor union struggles. What's going on there? Yeah, this is a struggle with a difference. You know, I think if it, was, if it was just about wages and the normal traditional strike, it would have been settled by now. Mm. But I think one of the lessons perhaps we can learn from this is that um, just like businesses shouldn't have monopolies, unions shouldn't have monopolies. Mm. And unfortunately, Implats is a closed shop. You know, on the basis of 50 plus one, NUM takes all. So, you know, that didn't leave any room for, for other unions. Mm. Now, we see this uh, emerging union. Uh, it started in two rivers, it popped up at um, some of the Lonman platinum mines uh, and uh, the, the initials are coming up all the time. You know, AMCU, mm. which is the Associated Mine Workers and Construction Union. And they have been engaging in wild catism, you know, which is very unhealthy at this point in time because at least with uh, you know, a recognized union, there's certain rules mm -hmm. they followed and you reach a solution. But when you've got no one to negotiate with, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult. And you can see that playing itself out mm. at the world's second biggest platinum, op op platinum mine, you know, Impala Platinum in Rustenburg, with management sort of uh, pulling their hair out, not knowing what to do. It seems like um, the influence of the National Union of Mine Workers, which is normally so strong, mm -hmm. is weak there. And even though, you know, they bring on heavy weights I think um, the president of uh, the National Union of Mine Workers came on and they heckled him. Mm -hmm. So they didn't even want to hear him. And then, um, <coughs> you know, Kasatu president, uh, uh, Zuel and Zimavavi had to speak before they would sort of listen. And, and even that heavyweightism doesn't seem to have um, brought normality back. So I think, uh, you know, some very good intelligence needs to be done there and outside parties need to come in to find out exactly what the situation is because without knowing what the situation is, you, you can't deal with it. Uh, so hopefully, you know, even with the best will in the world, if, if they reach a solution now, we're still probably going to have two weeks of no production. Mm. And they've already lost, they say, up to 50% of their production. Which is an incredible amount. <coughs> now speaking also on Impala, they are facing um, a potential $48.5 million dollar um, rents bill in Zimbabwe. Yeah, you know, this ground rents issue. Again, it's, it's, um, there's not much logic in the way, you know, Zimbabwe is going about this. They have, again, this wonderful treasure chest in, in the Great Dyke. They have platinum. Southern Africa, we Southern Africans collectively are, are like the Saudi Arabia of platinum. You know, we're sitting there in a very good position. And all of a sudden, you get um, new politicians emerging. So Zimbabwe's uh, Julius Malema equivalent is now saying, well, you know, instead of paying forty-five thousand uh, dollars a year as a ground rent, you're going to pay like forty-eight point five million. You know, I mean, if they do this to the industry, they've calculated all the revenue will be taken. So I don't think these people do proper calculations. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what are they on about? Are they also telling. Um, they're telling implants that they should um, withdraw from Mimosa so that uh, Aquarius can take full charge of, of Mimosa mine in Zimbabwe and they feel that they can then have more indigenization through one owner. So they're gerrymandering with ownership, they're surprising everybody with uh, taxes which are really excessive. Mm -hmm. So again, platinum you know, is, is being hit because of uh, illogical ac activity. Now, government stoppages at um, Anglo-American have, have put um, platinum in the spotlight. Uh, what effect do you think this could have on Amplats? You see, this is Amplats, the, the world's biggest platinum miner. They've also got their problems. And, um, you know, it was a situation of the South African government causing a lot of these problems mm -hmm. because they came in with very ham-handed work stoppages in the interest of safety, which actually aggravate the safety, 
you know, if you've got a, a rail sleeper which is substandard and you close the mine mm. for, for four days instead of just changing the sweeper, I mean, that is really hop. You know, it's hurting the economy very badly, but it's also it's hurting platinum. And we also hear from the third biggest platinum miner, you know, Alonman, that they see a disruption coming, a supply disruption. We see from the analysts that study this carefully, uh, and the one is SFA Oxford, mm. they're talking about supply shocks. That is not good mm. for metal because you, you get a price spike and you think, wow, what a lovely price we're getting here. Mm. But then the scientists look at it and say, gee whiz, let's bring in something different because this is no longer economic. Mm. And if they put their mind to it, they will find something. You know, we saw the sort of strange use of fertilizer in autocatalysis. Now, you know, fertilizer is much cheaper than mm. platinum. They started using that, which um, boggled the mind. Uh, uh, you know, I hope they don't try and introduce something mm. to replace platinum. But this is the danger that you run. If you cannot supply, and you cannot supply at a reasonable price, people put their head together, they do some research, and they come up with an alternative. And we really don't need that mm. because South Africa is blessed with this wonder metal that should have such an industrial future, such an energy future, could drive our cars mm. in, the, in the future or play the big role in catalysis role for that, could supply carbon-free energy in the future. We don't want it knocked out of the water mm. at this stage. It's, you know, it's so well positioned. And that's why I think there is quite a lot of urgency in um, you know, Amplat sort of doing this review. And you could see the Anglo-American CEO, Cynthia Carroll, again coming under severe mm. pressure from the analysts who are peppering her with questions on, you know, what are you going to do to fix Amplats? Mm. Uh, Amplats is the problem child, you know? Are you going to give it some discipline? And of course, she has to respond. You can see that her heart is in the right place and she's putting up the protection shield and saying, we're not spinning this off, we're holding on to it, which is fantastic, I think, for South Africa because you don't want too much instability around mm. that ownership. But at the same time, she's going to have to review the whole business. Mm which, you know, demoralizes the staff. And it's unnecessary. Mm. They, they would have been able to produce good results um, had they not had those safety stoppages, those excessive 81 <laughs> safety stoppages. I mean, you can be the best CEO in the world, but, you know, if Neville Nicolai is faced with all these stoppages, he's not going to be able to produce. I mean, let me mine. You know, if you can't mine, how do you produce? And at the same time, he matched 2010 output, which I thought was very good in the circumstances. Now, on that note, what type of prices do you think we're going to get for platinum in this year? You know, there, there seem to be, um, there's, there's some gerrymandering with the pricing. Uh, and I, I'm coming across this regularly in metals and minerals. It's not just physical demand that determines that price in certain circumstances. Because you get a sort of a physical metal and a financial metal if there have been investors that have come in and they've bought up a lot of metal, they are on the periphery of the normal physical demand. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason they're short of cash or they're in a squeeze and they sell, it can affect that physical price. So it's very difficult to predict mm -hmm. which way uh, platinum is going to go at the moment because there is that influence of those investors and it's playing itself out. But the platinum producers know what they need and I think Neville Nicola said we, we need, you know, uh, $1,900 an ounce mm. of, uh, for platinum, which is quite a lot of money. And, you know, he believed that if the, the normal supply-demand forces were at work, those normal fundamentals, mm -hmm. he would be at that level. And that level would give him an incentive to, to invest more. And that's another problem, you know. Mm. We are short <coughs> of, of capital investment in our economy. Fortunately... President Jacob Zuma has written a fantastic State of the Nation speech. Uh, and our Finance Minister, Pravin Gordon, has matched that. Mm -hmm. And we can see that the expenditure is going into the right areas. You're not mm. just consumption expenditure. It's infrastructure expenditure. So important mm. because it, it floats a lot of boats when you do that. But the private sector also needs to be investing. Mm. They don't have an incentive to investment. Instead, uh, you'll find that you know the biggest platinum producer, Amplats, is is quite content to look for the crumbs on the surface. You know, um, 
platinum, but they, they didn't mine in the past because it, it wasn't sort of uh, overly attractive, mm. the upper ground too, close to the surface. Well, at least it's close to surface, so they've got an opportunity there. But they will start going for that and, and they will steer clear of putting any dollars behind deep level shafts being sunk. But of course, Implats is in a different situation and so is Longman, where you know they have shafts that they have to keep going because even though you find Implats is sinking so many deep level shafts, these are just replacement shafts. Eh? This is not growth. Mm. This is just to stay where they are. And a lot of them, fortunately, are, are very far advanced. So they will continue with those, but it's not so easy to continue with high levels of capital expenditure when your price of your commodity is not what it should be. So there are a lot of problems in, in the platinum industry at the moment. I, I hope some wise heads are being put together, including government heads, you know, to try and solve this problem. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Martin. We'll keep an eye on that. Thanks, uh, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insight into what's happening in the mining world.